Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Unify Protect NVR, model number UNVR. This is Ubiquiti's One U NVR platform for Unify Protect. Basically, it's a server appliance for surveillance cameras that has four hard drive bays across the front. This is one of three devices that is currently out of EA that you can get Unify Protect on. So you have the UNVR, you've got the UDM Pro, and then you have the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. All three of those have Unify Protect, uh, although the UDM Pro and the UNVR seem to get the firmwares uh, and the latest versions of software faster than those folks who have the Gen 2 Cloud Key. So this device features four hard drive bays across the front, very simple to install hard drives. You simply pop out the trays, put in your hard drives, and then slide them back in. Really nothing to it. And we're gonna talk about hard drive capacity uh, in just a minute here. If we look at the front, all we have are the four hard drive bays, and then over here is a little tiny reset hole. I think it's on that side. Yeah, there's a little reset hole for factory defaulting the device. It's pretty heavy when all four drives are in here. Uh, if we look at the back of the device, uh, certainly we have our power, and then we have these three fans, because with all these hard drives writing data from all these cameras, this device does tend to run a little warm. This little rectangular port over here is an RPS port. This device is compatible with Unify's USP RPS redundant power system so that you can have not only this power here, but a separate RPS cable that provides power in case your main power fails. For network connectivity, we have two options. We have a standard RJ45 gigabit ethernet port, and then we also have a 10 gig SFP plus port for fiber connectivity to a 10 gig switch. All right, so going back to the hard drives, it's pretty interesting. You know, this is a, Unify Protect is sort of their, you know, you only get that software on this particular proprietary hardware. And they try to take a lot of the configuration out of your hands. One of the decisions that they made for this product is that they automatically configure RAID for you, which, you know, some people might be fine with, other people might have a problem with. What do I mean by that though? It means depending on how many hard drives you have in the device is how it configures RAID automatically on those hard drives. If you only have two hard drives in the device, you are automatically gonna be RAID one and, you, and that's it. Like you don't have another option. You can't do RAID zero and span across two drives. If you have three or four drives in the system, you can only be RAID five, right? So it automatically decides RAID five for you with three or four drives. There's no option for RAID 10, which you'd think you might be able to do with four drives. You could have two drives uh, striped, another two drives striped, and then those mirrored to make RAID 10. Can't do it, not an option. The drives that I have in my UNVR are the Seagate Iron Wolf 8 terabyte drives. And again, I have four of them in a RAID 5 configuration, which means I have about 24 terabytes worth of drive space available for my recordings. These hard drives are $204 each right now on Amazon, which means the total price as this UNVR is configured with the price of the UNVR at 299 bucks and $204 for each of these drives, we're looking at right around $1,115 uh, for this setup that I have right here. The maximum size hard drive that you can put in the UNVR are the Seagate Skyhawk AI 16 terabyte drives. Now, if you deck it out with four of those Seagate Skyhawk AI 16 terabyte hard drives, theoretically you would have 48 terabytes of RAID 5 storage in the UNVR, but Man, that would be super, super expensive. Those Skyhawk drives are $362 each, bringing the total price of the solution with those 16 terabyte hard drives up to about $1,747. Okay, so that's about it for the hardware. I'm gonna pop this back into my rack and we'll talk about how to set this up on your network as well as log in and take a look at Protect. When you first plug the UNVR into your network, it's gonna DHCP right onto your LAN. And from there, you can either use the Unify Protect app to configure it, or you can just surf to the IP address of the UNVR that was handed out by DHCP. In your browser, you're gonna go through a wizard to get it set up. So basically the first step is to name the UNVR. I called mine, you never know. Step two is to sign into your Ubiquiti single sign-in login. That's how you're going to log into your UNVR. 
Third step is to create an update schedule for automatic updates to the UNVR. Uh, and it says keeping your network up to date provides you with the latest security, performance, and features. And by default, it checks for new updates daily at 12 a.m. Then you have the option to send diagnostics and performance information to Ubiquity if you want. And finally, your device is set up. And then after a minute or two, it comes online and it's ready to use. When you first log in, you're going to get to this local portal. This is sort of a new thing that Ubiquiti is doing with their products where the users and settings for a device are in this Ubiquiti OS local portal. Uh, and then you can click into protect. Now, if you actually were doing this on a UDM Pro, for instance, you wouldn't only have the Protect app here. You'd have Unify Network, Protect, Talk, as well as Unify Access. But since this is a Protect-only device, the sort of shell OS around those applications is only serving you Unify Protect. But before we get into Unify Protect, let's take a look at our settings. So here we can see the Protect Network Video Recorder. We can see our uptime, we can see which firmware we're on and we can check for a new firmware. We can see some performance statistics on CPU, CPU temp memory. We can see our storage statistics. So it has a four core ARM 64 bit processor with four gigs of RAM. Our storage capacity shows 7.7 uh, .7 gigs of internal storage, that's for the operating system itself, and then we have our RAID array, which we can see, again, automatically set to RAID 5, and we can see the status of all four of my disks. They are eight terabytes each, and they are all healthy. If you hover over the little information icon, you can actually get a little bit more information about the hard drives, including the serial number. And then down below, you have the option to configure a static IP address, which is what I have done here. I set it to 192.168.200.16 on my local network. If you wanted to configure the 10 gig SFP port, you can also do that down here at the bottom. If we click on applications, this is gonna show us, again, we are in the Unify OS. This is gonna show us the applications running on this appliance, which in this case is only Protect, but if we want, we can check for updates to Protect. Right now we are running version 1.15.0, which is a relatively new version. I'd be surprised if there were any updates at this time. Then if you click on location, this basically shows you a map of your current location. It's gonna ask for your permission to gather location data. And this I don't think is used for anything yet, but it does say geofencing radius. So I think there's gonna be some geofencing features that come in to protect at some point in the future. But right now, as far as I know, there is no use for the location information in the Unify OS. If we look through our advanced options, we, have, we can turn on SSH, we can set the SSH password. Uh, we can turn on the ability to go to unify.ui.com and manage this device. We could change the name, we can set our firmware update schedule, and then we have some options here for restarting the device, powering it off, and doing a factory reset. Uh, this is what I used to shut it down just about an hour ago when I was filming the first part of this video. You never wanna just pull the plug on the UNVR. Uh, it's best to come in here and hit the power off button and let it sort of cycle down through its power, uh, power off uh, process. All right, let's go back to the local portal. And then there's also users. So users, this is where if you want people that are just read only users for some of your cameras, this is where you're gonna set them up. All right, back at the local portal, let's go ahead and log into Protect. And one nice thing about Protect that I actually like a lot is this over here. So with this new version, it now shows you how many gigabytes worth of data per day your cameras are utilizing. So for instance, I have one 4K camera, that's my UVC G4 Pro, and that's taking up about 119 gigabytes per day. And then we have the non 4k cameras so i have the six non 4k cameras actually only like two of them are on right now but that is taking up about 117 gigabytes per day so we can see all in all i'm using about 230 gigabytes worth of data per day and then if you figure that i have about 24 terabytes worth of total space available that gives me close to 100 days worth of recording capacity the way that I have this configured. Now, 
Most people who have the UNVR aren't only going to have just the three cameras that I have running. Uh, so, you know, expect that that would change and probably be a lot lower. You know, if you had 12 or 15 cameras on this thing, you might have 20 or 30 days worth of recording capability. Just looking at the interface here, we show our smart detections up at the top. We show our motion events down towards the bottom. And again, this is not going to be a comprehensive video on how to use Protect. You know, Protect is going to be the same no matter which Protect device you happen to be using. Uh, but I will show you some of the options here. So we go into settings. Again, we can see the MAC address, the IP address, the uptime. Uh, we can enable or disable the automatic updates and we can see the current Protect version. Then we have our backups. So for instance, this is taking daily backups. Now those are local backups, right? So you'd want to actually download these backups every so often. I mean, a local backup doesn't do you any good if the device crashes and you can't get that backup off the system. So make sure you come in here and uh, grab those backups on a regular basis. Under advanced, we have our device password. That's basically the password that's given to the cameras if you want to log into them locally. And then you could also factory reset from within Protect. Okay, so that's about it for this device. I mean, there's really nothing to the UNVR. It's a bunch of hard drives and a 1U chassis and it runs Protect, right? There's not that much more to this device. But I did want to talk about something, right? So I've been running Unify Protect for a long time. I mean, I've had it on this, uni this specific UNVR for about, I think, two or three months now. It's been a while since I put all the hard drives in, fired it up, and started using it with cameras just around my house here. I also, for a very long time, administered Unify Video servers. We used to sell Unify Video solutions. So we would you know, put all the components together to build a server, including the hard drives in whatever RAID format a customer wanted. We'd install Ubuntu, we'd install Unify Video, we'd install the cameras, you know, configure everything, and ship it out to customers. So I'm very well versed in both Protect as well as the previous generation Unify Video. A lot of people were really pissed off when Unify, about two years ago, discontinued Unify Video. I mean, they didn't make it official that it was discontinued, but they came out with Protect and sort of the writing was on the wall for Unify Video. Protect does not allow you to install the software onto your own hardware. You are stuck with whatever platform Ubiquity provides to you, right? And that, and meaning today, you've got those three options that I discussed at the beginning of the video. And a lot of people, I mean, still to this day, people bitch and complain about Unify Video and how you know you can no longer install the surveillance stuff onto proprietary onto your own hardware. It's all proprietary, and this and this and this. Blah, blah, blah. And I've talked about this in the past, where I fully understand Ubiquity's decision to put Protect on proprietary hardware. Because in terms of developing the software and the features that you can provide to your user base, as well as just ease of use for customers, it's much better when you can control both the hardware and the software. It's a much better end user experience than Unify Video. So Unify Video, we had a ton of Unify Video servers out there in the wild. And to this day, we still occasionally have to go in and administer those servers, or you know, it reboots and the, it doesn't come back up properly, or a hard drive, you know, the main data array becomes unmounted or something, right? There's just always these little problems that can happen. You know, maybe you do an apt get update and, you know, it blows something out that just, you know, hurts uh, Unify Video, right? It was always a pain in the butt to administer Unify Video. Yeah, granted, you could do it yourself, but it was always, always, always a pain. The one thing that I can say about Unify Protect being on proprietary hardware is that it is set it and forget it. I mean, it has been so easy to administer, I don't even think about it. This UNVR is always running. If I wanna look at footage, I pull it up on my phone and I can look at that footage. I pull it up in my browser and I can look at that footage. There's no lagging, there's no stuttering. Occasionally I do have problems trying to connect out to Ubiquiti's cloud service. That doesn't, that kind of seems to be a little bit flaky, but locally on this network, this product is so solid. It just makes me thankful because I know what administering Unify Video was like. It was a super pain in the butt. 
and this one is not. I'm very thankful for this UNVR, and I think, I guess the point I'm trying to make is I can't really say enough about it when you have a product that you don't have to think about. And that's, there's, there's so much to be said for that, right? Like as IT administrators, you know, most of the people that watch this video are gonna be in IT. And as IT administrators, you don't like the devices that you constantly have to babysit and update and figure out what's wrong with and oh, there's another problem with such and such device, right? We don't like that stuff. We like the stuff where we put it in and it just works and you never have to think about it. And that's what this UNVR is to me. So I know there will, be, there will be tons of arguments down in the comments about why they should have never gotten rid of Unify Video and why it was such a bad move for Ubiquity and blah, 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 blah. I'm here to tell you right now, I don't think it was a bad move. I'm glad that Unify Protect is as solid as it is now. Uh, you know, there's some other things about Ubiquity that aren't quite as solid, but running Unify Protect on the UNVR is a set it and forget it platform, and I really, really love that. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.